Ancient Egypt in its time was one of the most progressive empires and communities of the world. Not only did they excel in the building of amazing monuments, but in charting the skies and surprisingly a very progressive social climate. They were the melting pot of the ancient world. Today we're going to learn a few things about the ancient Egyptians. The first thing we're going to be learning about the ancient Egyptians was writing. While the first form of crude writing was first seen to pop up around 40,000 years ago, it isn't what is labeled as true writing. It was found that the Stone Age people would make notches in wood, bone, or stone to count. That's about as far as it went. True writing really wasn't introduced into the world until about 3200 BCE. Most historians will actually lead you to believe that cuneiform, developed by the Mesopotamians, was the first written word. That fact is actually in debate right now in the archaeological community. For such a massive theory into the timeline of humanity's foray into the world of literature to be taught as fact in classrooms and universities makes you kind of wonder, doesn't it? Why would we be fed this information as fact whenever it's a theory? But back on track now, as for why it's up to debate, ancient Egyptian script has now been dated back to 3400 BCE. Similar debate surrounds the Indus script of the Bronze Age, the Indus Valley Civilization in ancient India around 3200 BCE. In addition, the script is still undeciphered and there is debate over whether the script is true writing at all or instead some kind of proto-writing non-linguistic sign language system. It, we really don't know. As it stands with the new evidence though, it's looking like ancient Egypt is the most likely candidate for the first written word. With all this confusion and debate, does it really matter who the first one to invent the written word is? Maybe it was the space aliens that taught us. Most writing started off as a diagram or a picture and evolved into the written word. Writing first started out as a way to keep tally of food, religious rites, and mapping out the stars. It wasn't until the late Hellenistic age that writing took on a new form. Creative writing, telling stories of grandeur, sometimes for entertainment, or to keep the history of the world around the people of that time. Maybe that's where this book came from. One of the greatest writers of ancient times and where a lot of historians learn of the culture of that time was the writings of Homer. With the invention of writing, humanity was able to spread knowledge, keep record of current events, and entertain themselves. Writing was the basic building block of humanity's introduction and creative thinking and storytelling. How would life be today if we only communicated by speaking directly to each other? So much history would be lost. So much of everything would be lost. It's just hard to even fathom. Let us know what you guys would think of a world without literature or writing in the comments below. Astronomy. In the beginning, Upper and Lower Egypt were separate. Both were avid watchers of the night sky and its patterns. Although both had different calendars, once they reunited, they were able to come up with a calendar based off their nightly observations. They came up with a simplified civil calendar with 12 30-day months, three seasons of four months each, plus an extra five days at the ending, giving 365-year day, but with no way of counting for the extra quarter day each year. Day and night were split into 24 units, each personified by a deity. Their observations were also so great that many of their temples allowed the casting of different lights with the spring and winter equinox. Many of the obelisks were also used as clocks. As the sun would move around the earth, it would cast a shadow from the obelisk on a marker, giving a rough idea of the time of day. Ancient Egypt wasn't one of the only civilizations to observe the night sky in great detail. The Mayan and Aztec civilizations of Mexico and Northern America and Southern America also dabble greatly in astronomy, and they'll be covered in a later video. One of the most astounding astronomical observations of the ancient Egyptian was their obsession over Orion's belt. Not only did they build the Great Pyramids to match part of the constellation, they were so accurate in their observation and construction of the pyramids that every 2,737 years, Orion's belt will align itself over top of the Great Pyramid's tips as it sets. This isn't some coincidence. The ancient Egyptians were able to track the stars so precisely that they knew exactly where they would set then build monuments that are so massive that modern construction companies have no idea how to replicate. Maybe that's why there's so many theories about aliens building them. Maybe we should call Secure Team 10 and get them on that. But they were also able to place the pyramids so exactly that every 2,737 years that the stars would actually align on the tips of the pyramid. Not only that, the ratio and distance between the pyramids matches that of the stars to scale. Even more so, the Great Pyramid is not only four-sided like many believe, but when hit with the sun on a certain date and viewed from the sky that we actually learned it is eight-sided. Whew. All this to match the stars. Why might you ask? I'll be doing a full-length mini-series on the pyramids of Egypt later on at a later date, but the ancient Egyptians' understanding of the night sky cannot be understated. Many scholars to date are confused as to how the ancient Egyptians were able to predict future astral events to such a degree of accuracy. There's also a theory that they figured out the Earth was round nearly four to 5,000 years ago, and we as a people just up and forgot after the fall of the Roman Empire. So much knowledge was lost over time, and that's why it's important to look back at these advanced ancient people. Where would we be today if we held on to the knowledge that we lost? That science wasn't viewed as a mockery of the gods and destroyed by the church, but embraced by it and all. 
But what would happen if religion and science actually worked together? Where would we be culturally and technologically? Let us know what you guys think in the comments below. Oh, there's just so much to cover when it comes to ancient Egypt, and this video is getting a little long, so the next topic is gonna be the last one on today's video. We're, we're gonna touch on Egypt again in the future, there's just so much involved with Egypt. So without further ado, number three, the Egyptian melting pot. Now, this really isn't a technology, but more of the social climate of the ancient Egyptian world. As we come to understand the ways of ancient Egyptians, we begin to learn about their worldly views. Ancient Egyptians feel that their soul is grounded in the lands that they live on, so they really didn't travel too much. But many of the ancient cultures and civilizations at the time were very... Well, they really didn't like other people. What I mean by that is, uh, usually other tribes or races killed each other because they weren't a part of their own, or they were a different color, different religion. Actually, if you think about it, it's mainly why people are still killing each other today. Maybe another thing that was lost with the ancient Egyptians was their inclusion of everyone. In a time where women were thought to be lesser than men, Egyptians were actually different in that aspect. Although the marrying age for women was young, around 13 to 15, and for males it was 18 to 21, women had more rights in the world of ancient Egypt than in America in the 1950s. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Egyptian women could own land, run homes and businesses, and preside over temples, and they could even be pharaohs, as in the example of Queen Hastafut from 1479 to 1458 BCE, or the earlier queen, oh boy, Sobekanofru in 1767 to 1759 BCE. I'm talking Egyptian, boys. Also, Egyptians even allowed people of other cultures or faraway lands to immigrate and assimilate into their world. The defining example of that was Cleopatra. Cleopatra was a female Macedonian Greek who was a pharaoh in Egypt. Granted, her story didn't end the best of ways, but she was still a female leader and a foreigner leading an Egyptian society. The fact that ancient Egyptians' leadership was more progressive than modern-day America is astounding to me. Ancient Egyptian society was miles ahead of its corresponding empires at the time and a lot of times current empires. Another major misconception was that slaves built the pyramids, that it was Jewish slaves. Well, actually, the, the, the builders of the pyramids were honored workers. Recent excavations show that grave sites around the pyramids recently discovered and documents show that, that that was the workers and builders of the pyramids themselves. If they were slaves, they would not have such an honor or be held in high esteem and actually given grave markers. And recently discovered documents show that whenever workers would get off of their shift, they would go and enjoy a beer. Or seven. Although they were honored and worked loyally for their pharaoh, they did live short lives due to the backbreaking work. A lot of their injuries found in skeletal remains actually equate to the coal miners of the 60s and 70s. Ancient Egypt was progressive in many ways. It had a deep and rich culture that afforded even those viewed as low classes a comfortable life. They celebrated life and were so advanced that even some of their policies a lot more freedoms than countries in existence do today. With all of its knowledge and advancements lost in the destruction of time, war, and well, the church, humanity lost thousands of years of advancement. Ancient Egypt was the first renaissance for humanity. Hopefully looking back at all humanity lost due to conflict will persuade us to hold on to where we are today and continue to advance. Oh, who the hell am I kidding? We're gonna fry ourselves. Well, that's all for today's video and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. Ancient Egypt is one of my favorite topics to cover and we hope to cover these ancient folks even more. Let us know what you guys think in the comments below and if you enjoyed this, well, throw us a thumbs up. It always helps. Don't forget to check out our other videos, which I'm going to be featuring here, and subscribe to stay up to date with all of our content and videos. We'll see you guys in the next one.